Alright guys, so in this video we're going to be checking out some LED RGB video light panels made by a company called Sweetie. So I got this on Amazon and this is the box that it came in. So it's not too big. Let's go ahead and cut it open. Now this is a kit that comes with a bag and actually quite a nice one with a shoulder strap here. Very nice durable material. Velcro on the handles. Zippers. They feel pretty good. And this is everything that's included. So we get two of everything. So this is one of our light panels. And they are in a bubble bag. Looks like we got a little strap for cable management. A little user manual. A diffuser. And the light itself. And it is also shrink wrapped. And looks really nice. I really like the size. It's not huge. So it's quite easy to handle. So let's go ahead and cut this plastic off. So right away, very nice build quality. Looks like aluminum, mostly. Nice little touch on the logo here. So it looks like the main body is aluminum and this frame piece is aluminum. And then we got plastic corners on each side. So here's a little display and there's actually a protector over that. So this panel can use two of the NPF batteries, which are very common in the video world. And if you didn't want to use that, we could use the power, which is 15 volts DC. Got a little knob here, selectors on and off switch. So two would be the power supply, one would be the battery, and then the middle would be off. So flipping to the front, this is where we can see all of the different LEDs that are in this panel. And it is exposed. The LEDs are not protected by anything. So I guess that could be a negative if you <laughs> plan on using this in a more harsher environment maybe, but shouldn't be a big deal for normal use. So we got white LEDs and then we got yellow LEDs. And that's going to be for our color temperatures of the bicolor light. And then we got all these white little LEDs if you guys can see that those are the RGB color lights so these panels are not very large so they're not made for crazy output what these are really good at is producing color light and this is why you would buy these for the RGB part of it but they can also do normal lighting and by the way the model number is s45 now we do get this little diffuser panel but yeah this sheet somehow installs in front of this panel to diffuse the light and give you a more warmer output but what's interesting is that with this kit, you also get the diffusers. So it looks like they're in some separate bag here. So you get the outer portion, the frame part. And it just unfolds. And we got some nice metallic, almost kind of like a foil inside for reflecting. And it also comes with the fabric that diffuses the light. Or I guess it's not a fabric, it's like more of a plastic. And it is on Velcro, so all you gotta do is attach it. To the light box and now we have a <laughs> diffuser and it simply just straps around the light and helps diffuse the light even more so yeah that's really cool that you know we get all these extra pieces with this kit so if you want a more softer light this is extremely helpful here and when we set them all up we're gonna test that out so we also have a box in here and this is what includes the stand and so this is what it looks like. I'm not gonna say that this is a high quality stand, but I think for what it needs to do, it should be fine. And we have three separate telescoping poles that come out. So they're not super long, but I can't even fit it in the camera in this shot here. It looks like about six feet tall. So and definitely not crazy about these legs because even though I got this Titan here, they're still moving around. Maybe if we spread them more, it might be a little better. Let's see. No, they still have some play. I don't know if you guys can see here, but there's a bolt here that connects them. Pivoting point, and it's actually loose where it moves around in there. So the stands are definitely not very high quality. So probably would be fine for normal use, but anything more professional, you probably would want better stands. All right, and so for the last part, we get a power supply, which is 15 volts, four amps. Quite a powerful supply. And these lights are 50 watts, so and a pretty reasonable power cord, actually quite long, and it'll simply plug into the power adapter. And so together with the power adapter and the cord, I don't know, I'd say it's about 10 to 12 feet, so good link there. 
So yeah, you get everything in this kit to get started and even soft boxes. And basically the rest of the things is just another set what we saw. All right, I'm gonna clean up here a little bit and uh, set up the lights and we'll take a closer look at how they work. All right, so I got both of the lights out and set up on some stands and you can see the other one there in the corner. But let's take a closer look here at the control panel in the back, specifically how to use it. So we can see that it's like this green back illuminated style glowing and it's pretty nice I guess but unfortunately if you're on an angle it's hard to see it if you're looking straight at it it's fine but if you're looking more than 45 degrees it just goes all blurry and you can't see it so not too crazy about that but I guess it's not a big deal most of the time when you're changing something you're standing in front of it anyway so let's just go over everything here so we got channel which we're on 21 right now and what channel is the communication between more than one light meaning if you put this light and the other one on the same channel anything you do on this one will change the other one and we'll check that out in a second here and I think the ABCDEF selectors here are groups for certain lights so let's say if you had a group A and then a group B and a group C and you needed different colors for all those you can just change the groups and then set it to those so you can have a bunch of lights connected to each channel and then each channel to each group if that makes any sense so you can connect a lot of these together and control them from one which is pretty cool so then over here we have brightness which is at two percent right now and then the mode that we're in which is the bicolor warm to cool light and then our temperature at 4000 K so if we push the GP button we can see that we just change groups and each one is different to go back to a goes to where it was and if we click on channel here we can change the channel and we do have this rotary knob here that I forgot to mention and that controls everything you guys can see that we're changing channels so there's a total of 48 channels that you can pair in certain groups I'm gonna change that back to 21 and the reason we're changing back to 21 is because our other panel is set to channel 21 and so they sync together when they're both on 21 so it automatically goes back to brightness levels and you know by turning this knob here you control the brightness and if you guys notice when I go up that panel on the side there that you can barely see also goes up and I'll zoom out here in a second so we can see it a little better. So here we have a hot button for brightness and this controls the brightness in four levels which is 25, 50, 75 and then 100. So we got 50, 75, 100 and then back to zero. So if you need to jump around you could use that. And then we have the mode button here at the end and that changes our mode so now we are in RGB spectrum. Also I haven't mentioned that it, there's a little button here right at the middle of the scroller and this actually selects the different options that you have in the menu. So we can go here from 2% brightness to the color spectrum. So we're on zero now and now we're 13%, 26, 30, 40 and you guys can see maybe kind of there on the edge that the color is changing a bit. But if we click this again, then we have another control and that it looks like the, I guess, saturation, I guess you would call it, of the color. So the more higher it is, the darker it is. And then the lower it is, the more washed out it looks, that particular color. So you can adjust the colors quite finely. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So pretty basic controls. If you ever operated the light, this would be quite easy. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here, guys, so you can see a little better. And we're going to turn it a little. All right, so now you can see the other panel. And what's interesting is we're in brightness mode right now. So, you know, they're, since they're synced, they work together. So as I bump this one up, the other one goes up in brightness. So it looks like we're in some blue color right now, which is 220. But here's the interesting part. Because these things are grouped together and they're on the same channel, what I can do is go back to this panel, do the brightness here, and that one will adjust with it. So they're both adjusting at the same time. So since they're grouped together in one group, they both work together from either control panel. Now let's try to set this one to another group. So let's say B. And we can see how the other one stays still blue, but this one turned green. So even though we're on the same channel, we're now controlling the group of B channels. So you can see here how you can have six different groups. So you can technically have six different colors with up to 48 panels in the six groups. So the limiting factor is the channels, which is 48. But you know, if you got 48 of these divided by six, and that's how many you can control separately at once. I know this sounds a little confusing, but I think most people, the way they're gonna use it is together or maybe another pair. So if you wanted all the lights to do the same thing, you just go all of them to group A, let's say. But if you wanted two out of the four to do two other colors, then you would just assign one to A and then the other to B. 
So I guess this could be quite helpful if you wanted quite a few lights in different places and you wanted to control them all from only a few of the panels because some of them, let's say, are on the ceiling or hard to reach to, let's say. This is, makes it very nice and convenient. So definitely love this feature. So let's go back to our group A so we can get back on the same level here with the other one. And we'll push the middle button here. Then we can change our color phase. And we're gonna, I'm just going to scroll through it so you guys can see. So we're turning purple now. I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick this up. Now we're turning pink, orange, green, and then back to the blue. So yeah, quite a nice spectrum of color. Now if we click our mode button, we actually have another mode which has like these little extra functions that do interesting things like this one is called SOS. So that's what it does on SOS, it kind of just blinks. And you can control the brightness of that, which is really nice. So I'm just going to turn it to 10 so we can see a little better. But this is what SOS does. So again, we're going to click on the middle here to change to the next one by scrolling it. So this is two lightning. If you wanted to have lightning, you got that option. Then we got a lightning part two. So this is a different type of lighting. TV screen, so if you want to imitate a TV, I guess. This is police, which goes from blue to red. Could be quite trippy. If you're making a scene with police, this could help a lot. Okay, let's go to the next one, just ambulance. So we're going between blue and white. Then we got fire, which is white and red. Number eight is RGB circle, and that just kind of smoothly goes through all of the different colors of the RGB. Then we got a quicker cycle. The same RGB circle. And that's everything. It goes back to one, which is SOS. So yeah, if you care for some of these, it does have it. Okay, let's get out of here before I go crazy with the lighting here. Click on that. And we, now we're going back to the normal lighting here. So we're at 4000K temperature. And we can adjust that. Let's go all the way down. That's 26K. And well, I'll just have to say that the yellow is not as yellow as you would think. It's more of this lighter colored, softer yellow. I don't even know how to explain it. Like a washed out yellow. It's not really that yellow as it supposed to be. But I think most people probably don't go that low. And if you needed to imitate something, you know, more orangey or yellow, you probably want to go to the color spectrum anyway in the RGBs. So I'm going to go up slowly here. So we're at 26, 27, 28, 29. And you guys can see that the secondary LEDs are kicking in, the blue ones, as we go up. So 37, 38, 39. So I would say about 45 or so is the medium, what it looks like. And then as we go up higher to the cooler, the yellow ones really start to dim out and the blue ones take over. And again, the blue ones are not actually blue. They're more of like an aqua washed out blue. And I don't know if you guys will be able to tell on the camera there, but hopefully you will be. I actually prefer this kind of blue better because it actually gives more real to life cool temperature instead of the ultra blue style. I think for me, I'd use it somewhere in between 4,000 and five, depending on what I'm filming and where. So, and I might go a little higher on this one because I do like the blue on here. So yeah, as far as the controls go, it's pretty straightforward. Very cool that you can control both of them with one light. Now, if you were going to use the batteries, I think you'd have to have two of them to make up the 15 volts to run. So, you know, one battery is not going to work. You're going to need two of them if you want that option. So I'm just going to use the provided power cables that plug in right here. And I definitely like that the cords are longer. So for the next part, I'm just going to set up a little lighting. We can check out the softbox here, how it looks like. And I'm going to just point both of the panels at the same item. And we'll switch between one and the other so you guys can see how well the softbox works. All right, so what you're looking at is my gimbal, which is the Weeble S. And I got both of the lights on right now and pointing at the gimbal. And they're both at 10%, 45K temperature. So I'm gonna turn off the one without the softbox. So that's what it looks like with the softbox. All right, so they're both on again. Now I'm gonna turn off the softbox. And that's what the one with the hard light looks like. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but the one, the soft box looks a lot smoother. Now the light is more dispersed also. So depending on what look you're going for, if you want to make things look more softer, if you're filming people, soft boxes usually make it look a lot nicer on skin and face, but products or other things, you know, it depends what look you're going for. So, so turning the soft box back on, turn the other one off. Yeah, you can see how the softbox is just a lot more softer. And the light definitely diminishes somewhat because of the disbursement. It's not as bright or direct. 
But the good part is with soft boxes is that we can crank up the brightness and still get a really nice soft image. And that's the great thing about the soft box. So you guys can see here, I'm going pretty bright on it. By the way, this is only 28% here, 30% right there. So that's already too bright. And you guys can see how nice and smooth everything still looks with the soft box. So obviously we can change color. So here we are on green right now. So I'm gonna leave the brightness on 20, which is pretty bright. And I'm just gonna run through the colors real quick for you guys so you can see. And this is with the soft box, what kind of looks we can get. So depending on what you're going for, you can really get quite creative with this kind of RGB lighting. And there's our really yellow that I was talking about, low Kelvin, 35, 36% on the RGB colors and you really get that yellow look. So if that's what you need, you can do that in the RGB. Yeah, so we're going back to green now. So yeah, you can get quite creative with this light. So you guys can see when I turn everything blue, it is very, very blue. All right, so let's go back to our normal lights and that's what it looks like. So yeah, I'm pretty happy overall with how the lighting is. Seems nice to me. So yeah guys, this is the Sweetie S45 RGB light panels. So overall, I'm quite happy with it. And I think they're great for what that is. I love the size, it's not large. It does come with everything you need to get started, like the power supplies and the stands. And I definitely love the soft boxes. I think I'll definitely be using those. And this is what the box looks like on the panel. So here you guys can see a little closer. And if I film even right at it, you can see how soft the light is. So yeah, very nice. And the panels also look really nice. They're quite thin and just seem to be very good quality built. I definitely like that the bodies are aluminum and pretty much everything is metal. All these connectors here, the mounts. Now one thing I definitely don't like is these stands. And the reason for that is because unless you have them wide like this, they're really wobbly and really just not good. So I feel like they could definitely improve that. So that is definitely kind of a letdown. So don't expect the stands to be any good on this set here. And you might get frustrated with them pretty quick. I'm okay with them. As long as they're spread like that, they're fine. I might change them to my other stands and use these somewhere else. Also, another thing I did not like is this knob here it's it's kind of finicky a little bit not that it's not a good control but it's just a cheap feel kind of and it gets stuck in certain spots like it's harder to turn right here and then all of a sudden it just goes easy it just feels cheap i guess like it gets caught up in certain areas and also pushing this little thing is kind of a little bit hard because you end up you know just rocking the light around but you know that's kind of nitpicking a bit but i wish this would feel a little better so not a big deal but just something to note but overall i feel like they're great value and you get a lot with the kit that you get here rgb panels naturally are already you know not cheap because of the different leds that are included and the color spectrums they can produce but you know this goes even farther and syncs them together which is also great and not to mention the soft boxes included is a huge plus and also the carrying bag is actually quite nice and padded very well so overall, I'd give it a thumbs up. If you can get them under $300, it's definitely a good deal. They're definitely bright enough for most people, I would think. Unless you're gonna to try to use them during daylight, that might be a little bit of an issue, but for a darker environment, it's kind of like I have here, it's not a problem at all. And also guys, I forgot to mention that you can mount them a different way. It's like this one I have leaning over, and that way you can you know, put it flat like this where it shines straight down at something. So that could be quite useful too. And by the way, I also didn't mention that the motion and the drag in these tighteners here is very nice. It's very smooth. So it just goes where you need it and <laughs> stays there. So that feels really good. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button. If you want to pick up a set for yourself, I'm going to have some links in the description. Check it out. And if you enjoy videos like this, I got a lot more interesting things coming up. So stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.